Well, time for sports now. On TV set breakfast, we start from the home front where the Director General of the Lagos State Sports Commission, Gafar Bolowoto, has assured that the states will be ready to host the Super Eagles for their final World Cup qualifying game against Cape Verde at the uh, Tesla Balogo Stadium in Surulere, Lagos. The DG gave the assurance uh, as preparations for Nigeria's final round of World Cup qualifying games get on the way. The Super Eagles will tackle the Lone Stars of Liberia at the Grand Star Tangier in Morocco on Saturday, the 13th of November, before flying into Lagos for the final group game against Cape Verde's Blue Sharks at the Tesla Balogo Stadium on Tuesday, the 16th of November. Nigeria topped the group with nine points, but are closely followed by Cape Verde with seven points. Cape Verde will host the Central African Republic in the island city of Mideo before coming to Lagos for the final showdown against Nigeria. The Eagles will need three points against the Lone Stars on the neutral trough of Morocco's principal northern city to remain on firm ground before they host the Cape Verdeans in Lagos' commercial capital. The state government, as usual, is also very, I mean, is very ready. Um, special thanks to Mr. Governor for his assistance and his uh, support at all times. Um, we shouldn't expect anything short of total victory for the Super Eagles. And uh, it's going to be the last qualifying match for them. And uh, God's willing, after the match, we will see them again in Lagos. And above all, the massive innovation work that is going on in our, in our stadium. The VIP pavilion, the media center, the control room, the sound system, just name it, the dressing rooms for players, officials, and uh, ball boys, they are of standard as we speak, the world standard. And that is the advantage that we are. All right, uh, still talking about uh, news stories from the home front. Kuala United have rejected uh, head coach Abdullahi Bifo's resignation while urging him to return to his position after recuperating from an eye surgery. Bifo submitted his resignation letter last week and stated that November the 30th will be his last day of appointment. The gaffer was queried for not attending the body of defense of the club by the Kuala State Sports Commission. And Bifo, while responding to his query from the state's sports commission, claimed that the act breached the terms of his contract as it was not directly employed by the commission. The club's media officer, Bashir Jimo, in a statement said that the board had rejected the head coach's resignation, reminding Bifo that he signed a three-year contract which needs to be completed. And moving away from there to the Grassroot Football League in Nigeria, where the five-star Premier League, one of Nigeria's foremost football competition, will wrap up this weekend with a final match at the Mediterranean Recreational Center in Abuja. The final will be between defending champion Suicide Squad uh, against um, Chio FC, which will see the new champion emerge in the Nigeria Grassroot Football League. The project manager, Olumide Aturu, joins us on the breakfast show this morning to shed more light into the game coming up this weekend. Good morning to you, Olumide. Thank you for joining us uh, on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. All right. Uh, it's a cold morning here in Lagos as well. I can understand uh, the voice. Uh, tell us uh, what's the build up to the five star Premier League finale coming up this weekend. It's been an intense uh, week of uh, matches from the preliminary rounds to the final. What are we expecting at the Mediterranean Recreational Center in Abuja this weekend? Uh, thank you so much for having us this morning. Uh, it's been hectic trying to prepare for the finals. Uh, we are really happy about the progress of the league this season and then with the introduction of Mary Pet and, and uh, what are you doing? the grassroots. And then we've been able to uh, make sure that everything is intact. And then we are happy that uh, everybody are yeah, excited and happy. Here. So it's, it promises to be interesting. All right, only day we seem to be having some challenge with the audio there, but of course, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to. Um, uh, find our way around that but uh, if you can hear me uh tell us a bit up to how the competition has uh, developed to this extent we've seen, we've seen pictures 
of how the teams have squared up. It's even hard to know that this is a grassroots football competition based on the level of organization. How have you been able to run this season up to this level? Yeah, uh, it's, it's been uh, hard work. And then it's been the cooperation from both the teams, from the, uh, the organizers who are my colleagues, from the sponsor, from the partner. The introduction of the sponsor actually played a whole lot of role. Mary Beth Sports, they've done absolutely well. And then our media, the media team, the everybody. And then thank you so much for also being part of the progress. It's been, the, been great, you know. And then even the NFF, they are happy about the development. And then we are looking forward to, to have a, a spectacular uh, grand finale on Saturday. All right, on the final note, as we wrap up now, let's talk about um, uh, this um, grassroots competition as a, f um, a stepping stone for football, professional football development in Nigeria. The Nigeria Professional Football League is still yet to resume after three months that the season ended, and now we are faced with the reality of still uncertain about when it's going to happen. But the grassroots football league started, and it's going according to calendar. What lessons can professional football investors um, get from the success of the five-star Premier League so far? Um, I would say it's a bit of, uh, you know, grassroots, that's where everything starts. And that's why we're trying to get everything right from the uh, basics. So the regiment, which is the normal, uh, making sure of the timing. Yeah, timing has been a major, major, major um, really putting it out to ensure that timing when we say matches are set for 345 it is 345 because we know someday we're going to be on uh, tv and then uh, make sure that everything is being projected live and then that's why we have actually ensured that all the teams they respected the timing and then the instructions the guidelines for the organization of these uh, matches so uh, i believe that the um the uh, the other football bodies, they are also they are also making sure that this works. But from us, from the grassroots, we just want to make sure that uh, timing is is a key 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 factor, and that's how that has worked for us this season all and right. from other seasons. And we're not going to stop. Mm. All right, I wish you all the very best, Olumide Aturu, project manager of the Five Star Premier League. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast this morning.